Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 24th, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. You feely, we're coming for you in about, ooh, four hours and nine minutes. Get ready, my friends. Cooner country is going to rise again. Okay, my friends, jam-packed show for you today. Uh, quick reminder, obviously, huge rally today planned in front of the Michael J. Ruane Judicial Building. 4.15 p.m. is when we're going to start demanding the impeachment of that corrupt liberal judge, Feely. Uh, it's going to be on Federal Street. You can also take the commuter rail. I'm urging all of you, if you don't want to get stuck in traffic, maybe taking the train is your best alternative. You get off at the Salem, um, the Salem stop. We're on the commuter line on the Rockport, Newburyport line. I hope to see all of you there, Cooner Country. It should be an incredible, incredible rally. Okay, my friends. A lot to talk about at 105. You don't want to miss it. Trump pulls the trigger. He has now officially canceled the summit with little rocket man, North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. He says it's over. It will not happen. Why did Trump do it? Was he right to do it? We're going to have retired Colonel Douglas McGregor on to talk about that at 105. But first, my friends... The greatest scandal in American political history, much bigger than Watergate, has now been given a name. And the mainstream media, the Democrats and the deep state are now melting down. Donald Trump now has said this scandal is not just bigger than Watergate. It may be the biggest scandal in American history. Its name, Spygate. Roll it. Brittany. I want them all to get together, and I want them, because everybody wants to solve, but a lot of bad things have happened. We now call it Spygate. You're calling it Spygate. A lot of bad things have happened. I want them all to get together. They'll sit in a room. Hopefully, they'll be able to work it out. My friends, look, what's going on here, and there's no question about it now, it's, it's clear. It's, it's, now it's overwhelming. The evidence is now stacking up in which there was a counterintelligence operation launched, as Trump now calls it, the criminal deep state, his words, not mine, to now take out President Trump during the campaign and then to bring down a duly elected president. Now, Cheryl Atkinson has a brilliant piece in the Hill newspaper. She's a former CBS investigative reporter, and now she lays out the case, I think, absolutely brilliantly. Here is now what we're facing and why now the media can no longer ignore this story. They can't. So now they're trying to spin it. Yes, they were spying on Trump, but it's for his own good. It was to help him. He should be grateful that they were spying on him. Or some are saying that spying is not spying. Well, he was an informant. Stephen Halper, he was an informant. He wasn't a spy. What do you mean spying? It's not spying. Here is now the way Atkinson, I think, has brilliantly laid it out. Here is what we know so far. In a secret covert operation known as Crossfire Hurricane, we now know that the FBI along a uh, masterminded by John Brennan and the CIA, along with James Clapper, the former director of national intelligence, in collusion with the Obama Justice Department, the Hillary Clinton campaign, and the Democratic National Committee, launched a secret covert counterintelligence operation to first infiltrate the Trump campaign and then spy on Trump and his inner circle. And in particular, here is now the absolute latest. We know definitively that they used a former CIA operative, now an academic, an American, who's teaching at Cambridge University, Stephen Halper, to secretly spy and insinuate himself into the Trump campaign in which he was spying and actually secretly recording Carter Page, 
George Papadopoulos, two advisors on the Trump campaign, as well as Trump's co-chair, Sam Clovis. But it's much deeper, much, much deeper. We know for sure that there was also secret surveillance and wiretapping of seven key Trump associates. Steve Bannon, who was Trump's top campaign advisor, they were secretly monitoring and listening in on all of his phone calls and reading his emails. They were doing this not just with Bannon. We now have found out on Michael Flynn. Six months before Flynn had that infamous conversation with the Russian ambassador, in fact, we now know the FBI and the CIA were secretly monitoring and listening in on all of Michael Flynn's conversations, including the conversations that he was having with then-candidate Trump. But it's more than Flynn. We now know Jared Kushner was being secretly surveilled and spied on. On top of Carter Page... George Papadopoulos, Sam Clovis, and now it appears other campaign officials were also being spied on. In total, seven were being spied on. Not Paul Manafort, we now know, was being spied on for months. They were listening in on all of their conversations with then-candidate Trump. They also had some of them, like Manafort, offices or residences connected to Trump Tower. They were bugging Trump Tower. They were bugging people who had offices in Trump Tower. So, not only was Crossfire Hurricane uh, uh, infiltrating the Trump campaign, it was part of a larger campaign to spy on the entire Trump team. Now, why is this such a massive scandal? Number one, It is the outright spying of a rival candidate and a rival campaign in order to defeat President Trump. But more than that, it was the utter abuse of power, the misuse of our intelligence agencies, of our enforcement, law law enforcement agencies, the FBI in particular, to go after a rival candidate because the Obama administration did not want Trump to win. This is now blowing up in the Obama administration's face. This was all occurring under Obama's watch. And I think the ultimate now, this is where all of this is going to lead to. What did Obama know and when did he know it? This was James Comey, his FBI director, who was implicated now integrally in this. His CIA director, Brennan. His director of national intelligence, Clapper. His top FBI uh, uh, officials, McCabe, Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, Loretta Lynch, his attorney general. All of them were ramming through bogus warrants, spying on Trump, abusing the FISA system. And now we know of at least one spy that they implanted in the Trump campaign. Now there's talk there were many more. Many more. Some, I suspect, and we're going to find this out very soon, are actually in the Trump administration right now. They were recommending Stephen Halper for a senior position in the Trump government, even though he openly said he had voted for Hillary Clinton. So this is a secret, covert operation to subvert then-candidate Trump, and now to bring down his government. But I think there's another reason. There is another reason why the deep state is so desperate to bring down Trump. And it's not just for partisan reasons. It's that they don't want him, they fear him, uh, they can't stand his politics, but it's deeper than that. Listen now to Cheryl Atkinson, and I think she nails it saying there's ultimately even a higher and more nefarious goal. And that's why this scandal is so explosive. Roll it, Brittany. I would say this is right up there, but I would expand it. It's not just, as I've long said in my view, what happened during the 2016 campaign. It's why the intel community was so desperate not to have an outsider like Trump come in and nose around what they were doing for the past 8, 10, 12, 15, 20 years, which we're seeing some of that now. I think that's almost a more important part of the story once we get past what happened in 2016. It's not just because, in my view, these people hated Trump. I agree with her. They hated Trump. 
and they didn't want him to win. No question about it. And they wanted to rig the election the way they rigged the investigation into Hillary. And when they were stunned that he won, then they wanted to essentially bring about the destruction and ruin of his presidency. Bring him down. A coup. But now I think that she's right. They have been engaging in all kinds of crimes, illegal spying, illegal wiretapping, illegal surveillance, God knows, political assassinations. Ask Seth Rich, I could go on for 15 to 20 years. And they realized this guy's not one of us. He's not part of the establishment. He's not part of the Washington cartel. He's not part of the ruling class. We can't blackmail him. We can't control him. And so their big fear was to cover up even the deeper crimes and deeper corruption of the deep state. And that's why now they refuse to cooperate with the House Intelligence Committee, why they refuse to hand over documents, because now they have to not just bring down Trump, they have to cover up their own criminal behavior. And I agree with Cheryl. That goes back 10, 15, maybe 20 years. 617-266-6868. Trump now says the deep state is rotten, corrupt, and criminal. And that Spygate is bigger than Watergate. Is Trump correct? Your call's next. 1222 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends. Uh, you just heard me play the cut of Cheryl Atkinson. She is a award-winning CBS, former CBS investigative reporter. And she's saying, look, it's now clear that the deep state, the FBI, the CIA, along with Obama's Justice Department, were engaged in a counterintelligence operation to bring down President Trump, then candidate Trump, to spy on him, to infiltrate his campaign, and eventually in the hopes of defeating him. And she says, and I agree with her, it wasn't just for partisan reasons. Yes, they hated him. They loathed him. They wanted to defeat him. But they're trying to cover up, she believes, rampant criminality that's been going on behind the scenes, in the shadows, for the last 15 to 20 years. And Cheryl should know better than anybody, I've had her on this show multiple times, the Obama administration was spying on her illegally. They were spying on journalists. Benghazi, where they deliberately covered up the mass murder of Al-Qaeda, perpetrated by jihadists, killing even an American ambassador. All of this was done behind the scenes. Look at the IRS, how they weaponized the IRS to go after conservative and Tea Party groups. The creation of a national surveillance state, whereby they are now they're spying on millions and millions of Americans, listening in on our phone calls, reading our emails, uh, monitoring our electronic communications. All of this now has been getting slowly leaked out. We know this took place. Fast and furious, illegally running guns to the Mexican drug cartels. The secret CIA operation which Rand Paul exposed, whereby uh, Brennan CIA was running weapons and guns to Islamic rebels in Libya and in Syria. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Who knows what else they were doing? So I think she's right. They didn't want Trump to win because they didn't want all of these crimes and all of this massive abuse of power to be shown in public to be exposed. And it's not just Obama. This goes back into the Bush administration, maybe even to the Clinton administration. And that's why they had to take Trump down by all means necessary. Even Clapperhead, listen now to this. This guy is such a buffoon. What a loser. Oh my God, what a loser. Everybody's got a book now. So there's Clapperhead, who's now a paid analyst for CNN. OK, after, by the way, he was illegally leaking information to them. So they rewarded him with a huge TV contract. But let that go. So now he's peddling a book. Listen now to Clapperhead. Go on The View with Joy Behar. And basically inadvertently admit, yeah, we were spying on Trump. But but it was for his own good. Roll it, Britain. The, the, the FBI started to look into Trump's um, ties to Russia.
in the summer of 2016, and Trump tweeted that this spring, the spying rather, the spying that he claims is spying, other people say it's a whistleblower or an informant, he says that spying is bigger than Watergate. So. I ask you, was the FBI spying on Trump's campaign? No, uh, no he, they were not. They were spying on a, a term I don't particularly like, but on what the Russians were doing, trying to understand were the Russians infiltrating, mm. trying to gain access, trying mm. to gain leverage and influence. Mm. Which, so why doesn't he which is like what they do? So why doesn't he like that? He should be happy though. Well, he should doing, be. Right. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, he should be Russia happy. Propo uh, and this is one of the reasons I wrote my book was yeah. the threat that Russia poses because they are bent on undermining our system. Right. And that's what they they did and and had a lot of success during the course of the election. Right. Right. Okay. Look, think about it. You know, there's an old Eastern European expression. Don't pee on my back and call it rain. So now think about this. Well, no, okay. Well, it wasn't spying. Nah, it, okay, it was spying. Okay, <laughs> it was spying. But uh, he should be happy about it. He should love it that they were infiltrating and secretly surveilling his entire team, that they were spying on him. He should love it. If this was really about Russia, as they claim, and I can, it's very easy to blow that argument apart. Very simple. Why didn't they give Trump a heads up? If you're so worried about supposedly Russian infiltration and Russian meddling and interference, why didn't you personally brief the candidate of the uh, 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 of the Republican Party then for the election and say, you know, Mr. Trump, the Russians are trying to hack into your campaign. The Russians are trying to interfere in your campaign. Notice they didn't do that. They kept spying on him and his people because they wanted to get dirt to bring him down and they were using russia as the pretext that was the so-called justification to spy and try to find dirt what i can't believe in other words they wanted to do to him what they did to bernie they wanted to rig the election in favor of hillary clinton and what what i find incredible is you had that entire campaign wiretapped wired everywhere you, you had his son-in-law, you had his campaign manager, you had his campaign co-chair, you had his national security advisor, you, you had everybody. You had Steve Bannon, his top political advisor, and you still couldn't beat Trump? You're listening in like the Stasi on every freaking conversation, and you still couldn't beat him? This is the gang that can't shoot, shoot straight. Honest to God. ay ay ay, ay ay ay, My friends... They're a bunch of criminal gangsters, and they need to go to prison, starting with Brennan, Clapper, and Comey, and then go right down the line, baby. Sherry in Avon, you're up next. Go ahead, Sherry. Thank you for uh, taking my call, Jeff. You are, so, you are definitely right. But I'm just trying to figure, if they were trying to protect Trump, why didn't they put the spies in the Clinton campaign? That's a brilliant point. Why didn't they? They were so concerned about the Russians and old, and how do you infiltrate? It's highly impossible to go to every voting booth in every district. You would have to know every electoral college. It, 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 the voting booths aren't even connected to the internet. How could they do that? It's impossible. Sherry, I, Sherry, have you called before? I called a long, long okay, time Okay, Sherry, you, Sherry, Sherry, you got to call more often. <laughs> Sherry, listen, don't get this, don't take this the wrong way, okay? I love my wife. I only have eyes for my wife. Yeah. I love you in a non-sexual way, Sherry. That's you, good. You hit, this, you hit this baby right out of the park. Right. I mean, if they're so concerned about the Russians, why didn't they first say, hey, you know, Trump, you, you shouldn't be hiding Manafort or a uh, part of page. We have files on them. So just don't. And they should gave them a heads up, like you said. But how do you, common sense, how do you infiltrate, how do you spy on, on how do you take away the votes from the American people? You would have to know every electoral, I don't even know every electoral college in every state and every precinct and every district. They would have to have over a million Russian spies. Spies everywhere. And, and Sherry, I think the clincher, the checkmate, is, well, how come they didn't infiltrate then Hillary's campaign? If they're so worried about Russian interference and Russian and you know meddling, how come they were just infiltrating one campaign but not the other campaign? They helped Trump win. They helped Trump win. Sherry, 
as a great call. Please, Sherry, do call again, please. I will. God bless you, Sherry. Great call. 617 266 6868. Okay, my friends, we will talk about this at 105, I promise. Huge breaking story. President Trump is canceling his summit with Little Rocket Man, with North Korea's Kim Jong-un over recent hostility. WRKO's Bill Trafiro has the latest from the newsroom. Take it away, Bill. 1237 here on the great WRKO. Okay, just a quick reminder, my friends. Uh, we are about uh, almost uh, four hours. Anyway, three hours, 45 minutes uh, away from our rally. Uh, our J impeach Judge Feely rally in front of the J. Michael Ruane Judicial Building on Federal Street in Salem. It's going to start at 4.15. Uh, I'm urging all of you to please come if you can. It's very important. Uh, we're hoping to get a huge turnout. Force this judge is ouster. The pressure is building. You can also take the commuter rail. Uh, it's 4.15. A lot of cars, a lot of traffic. Take the get the um, take the Rockport Newberry Port line. Get off at the Salem stop. It's literally a three to five minute walk. So I hope to see as many of you there as possible. Okay, Trump is now calling it Spygate. He now says he's going to ferret out the entire criminal deep state that was illegally spying on his entire campaign. The more we find out, the bigger we realize how massive this counterintelligence operation was. Now the question is, how high does it go? Does it go as high as Obama? We're going to find out soon. Uh, Jim in Tempe, Arizona. Thank you for holding, Jim, and welcome. Hi, Jeff. Thanks Hi. for taking my call. Yeah, I think it definitely goes to Obama. This is a huge scandal. And, you know, I've listened to you ever since you guessed it for Dr. Savage, and the two of you are spot on about this. There's one point I take issue with both of you on, however, and that is Laura Ingram. She lied to you, Jeff. Before her TV show, she said, oh, sure, she'd have you and Dr. Savage on. You two are invisible to her. She's a fake fraud and a phony. And also, with regards to John Bolton, Dr. Savage thinks he is the swamp. Why do you love him so much? Um, well, Jim, I got to be honest with you. I'm really bearing my soul to you like I'm in the confessional. Uh, when I was at the Washington Times for many years, Bolton was leading the charge. Do you remember the International Criminal Court? Remember the ICC? Yeah. Where they wanted to indict American soldiers for so-called war crimes in any military operation around the world? I was leading the charge against the ICC, uh, saying it was going to violate our Constitution, our national sovereignty, that we're going to go after our boys and try to indict them uh, so to prevent us from having an effective foreign policy. Bolton teamed up with me in those years, and I got to tell you, he was then in the Bush administration. Jim, I got to tell you, he was an indispensable source. I mean, on foreign aid, on the United Nations, on the ICC, uh, he worked with me on those issues, and he was on those issues, he was magnificent, Point and he was very brave. What about Laura Ingram? So, about, and that's why I was loyal Laura to him. But, Jim, look, but I'm going to say something else, and Brittany's going to get very mad at me for saying it. She's getting mad already. I think he used us. I'm going to say it. He came on this show. He knew that Trump's people listened to the show. Every Friday, didn't matter if he was on a train, a subway, this guy in Shanghai, no matter where he was, he came on this show. Uh, she's mad. She's yelling at me in my ear saying, get back to Spygate. But I, 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 think, I think he used us. I'm going to be honest with you. I think he used me. So I'm very disappointed about that, and I want to ask him about that about whenever Laura I get him. Ingram? Uh, Laura, Laura Ingram, Ingram? I, I, Jim, I don't look. All I can tell you is this: uh, I don't want to impugn her motives. I don't know her that well. I've just interviewed her a few times. She promised that she would have me on her show. I'm you still and waiting. Savage, you, yeah, me and Savage. You. We're still yeah. waiting, Jim. Yeah. I, all I can tell you is I'm still waiting. I'm waiting for that call. I'm waiting for that email. Six one seven two six six. 6868, Brittany's got smoke coming out of her ears, okay? Because <laughs> she thinks I'm being unfair to Bolton. She thinks I'm being really unfair to Bolton. But anyway, okay, let that go. Um, all right, my friends, listen now to this. You want to see what kind of a person John Brennan is, what kind of a person Robert Mueller is. You got to listen to this. 
former CIA officer John Kiri Aku, hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, went on Tucker Carlson recently. He is a former CIA oper operative. He worked for the CIA in Pakistan, as Obama would put it. And he admits this. In 2007, he illegally leaked information about our waterboarding techniques that we were using on some jihadists and terrorists. He then says, look, the Bush administration in 2007 investigated me. And they said, look, leave this guy alone, okay? It's not worth a criminal charge. It's not worth destroying this guy. It's not worth sending him to prison. Then Obama came to power. And then Brennan came to power. And Robert Mueller got involved. And you are not going to believe what happened to this man. I've got that audio, that story, your calls next. Okay, my friends, listen now to this. You got to hear this. So, former CIA officer John Kiriak, who, hope I'm pronouncing his last name correct, correctly, was on Tucker Carlson. Listen now to this. So, he was one of the leakers about the CIA waterboarding Islamic terrorists in 2007. Bush, the Bush administration, investigated him. They cleared him. Roll it, Brittany. Well, Robert Mueller, uh, I had a more uh, recent encounter with, and that was uh, when he created the John Kiriakou Task Force at the Justice Department. He was the head of the FBI at the time. I had no idea that I was under investigation. Uh, when I went public on the CIA's torture program in late 2007, the Bush administration investigated me and determined that I hadn't committed a crime. They closed the case. Just a few weeks later, when Barack Obama became president, uh, John Brennan became the number two at the National Security Council, and he asked the Justice Department, Eric Holder, to secretly reopen the case against me. That went to Robert Mueller. He created this John Kiriakou task force and investigated. I, I'm so basically, so in other words, they want to get him. They want to get him. They don't want anybody leaking. Notice these are the the leakers. Don't want anybody leaking now that they're in power. Now that they're in charge. So now they say, ah, ha, 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 you think you were leaking under Bush. Well, we're going to show, we're going to make an example out of you to anybody else. You start leaking what we're doing behind the scenes. We're not like the Bushies. We're not going to let you guys skate. Oh, no, 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 no. We're going to ruin you. So listen now to what Brennan and Mueller did to this poor man. Roll it. Britney. You're telling me that John Brennan, who has a documented history of leaking to the press, asked for a criminal investigation into you, which resulted in you going to prison with five kids uh, because you leaked? Exactly. And you know, when I said that to my attorneys, the only response they could come up with was, that's Washington. The injustice is incredible. And this is why I'm so happy to have this opportunity to speak with you tonight. Because I know Robert Mueller, and I know John Brennan, and this is what they do. They set out to ruin people. You know, we look at these indictments in this so-called Russia Gate, Russia Gate that has nothing whatsoever to do with Russia, by the way. Uh, and, and none of these indictments have anything to do with anything. They're what are called throwaway indictments. So what you have is a man, Robert Mueller, who chooses a person and then looks for a crime to hang on the person rather than discovering a crime and then investigating to see who committed the crime. Bingo. Bingo. Or as uh, the analogy I like to use, the, the famous one from uh, Stalin, Lavrenti Beria was his number two. He told Stalin, show me the man, I'll show you the crime. Same thing. We're basically saying the same thing. He's completely right. What Mueller is all about and what the frankly the deep state is all about is not look a criminal act was con was committed let's try to find the criminal what happened etc pursue justice what Mueller's doing and what the deep state does is we got to get this guy how do we get him what crime can we possibly hang around his neck look for a crime find a crime if you got to manufacture a freaking crime do whatever you got to do, but take this guy down. That's Brennan and that's Mueller. By the way, this poor guy, they bankrupted him in 10 months. He lost his home. 
He lost everything. He goes, that's how they beat you in this town. Because Mueller, the deep state, they have got unlimited resources. I can't keep fighting these guys in court. That's, by the way, how they, that, that's how they broke Flynn. That's, that's how they're breaking everybody. That's how they broke Manafort. That's how they're, everybody that they've been indicting that eventually says, I want to cop a plea, is because they send them to court with an army of lawyers, and they basically financially bankrupt you. That's their strategy. So now that all of this, thanks to Trump, frankly, okay, and people like us in the media, in the alternative media, who won't let this story go, Spygate, now the layer and layers of this rotten onion are starting to get peeled back. Now we're starting to see how deep the rot and corruption and criminality goes. Now, listen to this shtick. Now, the, uh, the deep, uh, uh, deep state and their media collaborators, the media democratic complex, now their line is, listen to this, how dare you criticize Robert Mueller? <gasps> you're, you're, by surely criticizing him, by, uh, by attacking him, you're obstructing justice. How dare you investigate the investigators? How dare you attack them, criticize them? You're undermining the rule of law. You're undermining democracy. You, he's a special counsel. Hey, come on now. You can't attack him. Really? Well, in the late 1990s, when Kenneth Starr was the independent special counsel, and this time he was investigating uh, Bubba and Bill Clinton with Hillary Clinton in the wings yelling vast right-wing conspiracy, the very same media, and I wish you could see the visual with the audio, CNN, NBC, there's even Geraldo Rivera, CBS, ABC, all of them, Listen to how they demonized Ken Starr. So when they were protecting Bill Clinton, when he was getting uh, serviced in the Oval Office and lying about it with a 21-year-old intern, then it was fair game to just destroy the special counsel. Roll it, Britain. There is growing controversy tonight about whether the newly named independent counsel in the Whitewater case is independent or a Republican partisan allied with a gut Clinton movement. What the judge said, Peter, plays directly into what the White House's allies have been saying, that this is an overzealous prosecutor overreaching in a bid to bring down the president. By pandering to Clinton haters, Mr. Starr appears to be abandoning all pretenses of impartiality. He went into this job with a reputation is a fair-minded conservative. He now looks more like a political hitman, desperately ego, eager for a future Supreme Court appointment. If Ken Let's Starr is a credible yeah. prosecutor, he will bring this to a conclusion right. and the Clintons will be exonerated. Well, if he doesn't come forward very soon with credible evidence of law-breaking, he will go down in history as the peeping Tom prosecutor. I'm going to call any witness I can to prove that Ken Starr is a partisan zealot who has had a chip on his shoulder. Have you any doubt that Kenneth Starr and his deputies are pursuing, pursuing an agenda that is purely political? Let's not pretend for a moment that the Starr report is a balanced, judicious presentation. It's not. It is, it is a partisan prosecutor with some zealous aides who's trying to make a case against a guy he despises. Couldn't this be just a witch hunt? Couldn't, couldn't the, the, the Democrats who've been, and President Clinton's people who've been defeated? There's three more minutes of this. I, I just don't want to keep going. To, to, uh, there's three more minutes, and these are just little clips. I, I could do a whole show. So in the Whitewater case is independent or a Republican partisan allied with a gut Clinton movement. What the judge said, Peter, plays directly into what the White House's allies have been saying, that this is an overzealous prosecutor overreaching in a bid to bring down the reaching in a bid to bring down the president. By pandering to Clinton haters, Mr. Starr appears to be abandoning all pretenses of impartiality. To shoot him. But instead of shooting him, <laughs> I ended up shooting her. So, you know, I, yeah, she's dead, but, you know, I didn't really want to kill her. I want to kill another person. I don't care. She's still dead. You still shot her. So, you, I don't believe their motives. I think they're lying through their teeth. It's so obvious. But even if you concede everything, you're still spying. And spying 
is illegal. Not just illegal, it is grossly criminal and unconstitutional. You need to go to jail. I don't care what your reasons were. 617-266-6868. Anthony in Michigan, you're up next. Go ahead, Anthony. Doctor, that walk down memory lane with uh, the Clintons. No wonder the Democrats went after tobacco. Hillary got rid of all the ashtrays in America, throwing them at a bill. <laughs> hey, listen, before we get on the subject matter du jour, I want to give you a compliment, sir. You are a national treasure. Look at all the people that call into you from around the nation. What you're doing today, Godspeed. Thank and I you. have a tang tangent question. You are definitely in Mr. Deal's camp, but this election cycle, will you get people like John James and all the other senatorial candidates that could give President Trump a, a 60-plus majority in the Senate? Oh, I will do whatever I can to help President Trump. Anthony, Excellent. that that goes without saying. Believe me. Beautiful. All right. Um, on to the subject matter. Do you remember when Congresswoman Stefanik had Comey up on the dais and she nailed him and he sort of fumbled verbally about how they didn't give the gang of eight a briefing? Yes. Honest to God, Jeff, I think my gut feel on this is, and do you remember when they all met in Jekyll Island from our side of the aisle? Yes. I think the gang of eight is into this. They're sick as thieves and they knew about this. And this is why they're stopping this whole thing. They're all going to go down, Jeff. I agree with you. Anthony, I think this, look, this is like an octopus. Its arms stretch so far and so deep, like its tentacles just go so deep. And that's why they want to shut this investigation down. They want to shut Devin Nunez down. They want to shut people like me down. And they up next. Go ahead, Adam. Jeff, very Hi. good to talk to you. It's been a while. But uh, the point I want to make is that these very people that are always that are uh, so interested in Russian collusion, uh, with the Trump administration and whatnot, it seem to be as as good Marxists always do. They accuse the uh, other folks of doing exactly what it is they're doing. It seemingly so so works so well at disarming the other side. But uh, I guess I just wanted to bring up the point that uh, that every American, if they're not familiar with it yet, should do a little research and find and 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 or and whatnot. And, 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 and learn, do a little bit of research and come to the understanding that the party has been taken over, completely saturated with Marxists. You look at the progressive, Congressional Progressive Caucus, the Congressional Black Caucus. Adam, Adam you, you have put your finger on, I think, the pulse of what is really driving what's going on over the last 15 to 20 years. Globalism, open borders progressivism and what you've nailed is this the it, we got to bring back the house on american activities committee we got to bring back huac what the marxists did was they took over the democratic party they took over the universities they've essentially taken over the media and then using the democrats the uh, culture and the media they are now trying to take control of all of american society it's like a cancer and it's just spreading and spreading and spreading until we say enough is enough. Bring back HUAC. Clean all these reds out. Okay, my friends. The president is canceling a meeting with North Korea. In fact, we're going to discuss that in five short minutes. WRKO's Bill Trefiro has the latest from the newsroom. Take it away, Bill.